Today, we are pleased to have Dr. Rostovsek, a renowned NPN specialist at MB Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Rostovsek. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on the call. Absolutely. So I'm David Wallace, your host with PB Reporter. Uh, today, we are going to discuss Epsidin Mimetic PTG300 shows promise in initial phase two results in the treatment of polycythemia vera. So Dr. Verstavsic, tell us about the role of phlebotomy in treating PB. Polycythemia vera, as you know, is the disease where the bone marrow makes too many cells, and red blood cells in particular. Now you have uh, that uh, associated the risk of a blood clotting when you have uh, too many cells uh, circulating in blood around the body. Some patients may have a high whiteness and high platelets, but the red blood cell count is uniformly high in everybody. And to decrease the risk of blood clotting that comes with that elevated number of red blood cells, one would start therapy of polycythemia vera patients in two forms. The baby aspirin is given to everybody to decrease the stickiness between the cells, but then you need to decrease the number. And phlebotomy means bloodletting, basically. So you put a needle in the arm in the vein and you let the blood flow out to some degree, not all the time, a couple of eggs. And basically the goal is to decrease the number of the red blood cells to what we call hematocrit of less than 45%. Hematocrit is the percent of blood uh, that is actually red blood cells. So if you have a bottle of blood full uh, to the top, that's 100%, and how much of this is red blood cells, that's hematocrit. So you would do phlebotomies every week or so on to uh, eliminate excess of red blood cells and decrease hematocrit to below 45%. So it's mainstream of the therapy. That's what you do. Okay. Um, can you give us some background on the clinical trial as well as early results? Absolutely. So let's just also clarify that in addition to phlebotomy, some patients with polycythemia vera, older than 60, or those that had a history of blood clotting already, so-called high-risk PV patients for uh, blood clot, are given the medications, the chemotherapy, hydroxyurea is preferred one, to decrease that hematocrit below 45%, and with that potentially eliminate the need for phlebotomy, right? Mm -hmm. So you may have patients that are younger, that are only on phlebotomy and baby aspirin, or you may have a patients that are older or has a history of blood clotting that are on phlebotomy, aspirin, and hydroxyurea. Now, we would like to minimize the need for phlebotomy and eliminate it, as I suggested. Phlebotomy requires patients to come into the hospital, quite often may have some side effects, and we are, in many situations, able to eliminate, but not in all clinical scenarios, we are able to eliminate need for phlebotomy. And so this is where the study comes in. This is a study where we have a patients either on hydroxyurea or not, depends on their clinical scenario, that are still in the need of phlebotomy. And these patients are therefore enrolled on the study with PTG300 to eliminate the need for phlebotomy with these new medications that has unique mode of action to basically achieve the goal. Normalization of hematocrit below 45%. Okay, um, so reducing or eliminating the need for phlebotomy really is quite a benefit for uh, patients. And as a PB patient myself, I've experienced uh, phlebotomy has gone wrong and I don't care for the procedure at all. Um, can you explain what is a hepcidin mimetic and how iron deficiency plays a role in PB? When we phlebotomize the patients with the blood, the red color is the hematocrit, uh, I'm sorry, hemoglobin in the red blood cell count that contains the iron site, frequently would associate the red color of the blood with iron just to explain patients in a simple way that with phlebotomy you get iron out of the body, right? And so you people with polycythemia vera become iron deficient. Iron deficiency limits the growth of the red blood cells in, in, in the return. It's a food for red blood cells. 
and that uh, would uh, seem to be beneficial for the patients because then you eliminate phlebotomy in a natural way. Yet the natural way means that people are iron deficient and some patients have a difficulty with iron deficiency, has side effects on its own. Now what we have here is the medication that alters the metabolism of iron in the body of the patients and keeps the iron inside the cells and make it lower in the blood. So basically you would eliminate possibility of having some side effects from iron deficiency because it, now it's stored in the cells and yet you do still have a low iron in the blood and prevents growth of the red blood cells as it should be. So you have kind of a, a nice balancing act, achieving the elimination of the phlebotomy as the goal because iron deficiency in the blood, yet the iron is sustained at the good levels in the tissue of the patients. So altering the metabolism of iron basically is how this medication works uh, in a natural way. It's not a chemotherapy. Okay, and I'm sure that's seen as a positive. Um, so, is the drug likely to relieve symptoms, and what side effects have been observed at this point? The medication is given as a small injection under the skin once a week, and we only have a limited number of patients on the study, but it's exciting because in these seven patients so far, there is a very good signal that the goal of the therapy control of the hematology can be achieved with modifications of the dose of the first couple of months and then patients will be staying on what dose they need for a longer period of time. In terms of uh, side effects, because it's injectable under the skin, it doesn't really cause systemic symptoms at all. We have only a small reactions to the injections and nothing much more so far. So very safe, very effective in a small number of patients that we see so far, and it's only about the seven. Okay. Um, so, as I understand it, uh, the drug will be self-administered, is that correct? So, the, the, the concept here is that we can help patients that don't have a controlled blood cell count very well. That might be in a setting of a low-risk patient that are on phlebotomy only, but need uh, multiple phlebotomies, they run out of the veins, they have side effects from phlebotomies, they may have side effects from iron deficiency. So there is a, a subset of patients in that setting. There is also a subset in patients that is on hydroxyurea but unable to achieve control of phlebotomies, so you can add it on. These are some of the possibilities where this medication might have a role if we get to the level where this is really available to us in a community setting. It is, yes, it is uh, believed to be uh, given for a duration of time, that would be once a week under the skin to control the, the blood cell count, the red blood cell count for, for years to come. Okay, all right, very good. So is it possible that uh, PTG 300 could affect the underlying disease or possibly help ward off progression? So because this is the biological agent that alters the metabolism of the iron, uh, it is really geared toward the, the immediate need to decrease the phlebotomy need and control the risk of thrombosis. Um, and uh, the symptoms you ask about that may improve. We don't really know that yet. It's too early to say because the symptom uh, assessments are being done on the patients uh, as we speak when they are being treated for a longer period of time. Uh, we do not have a good feeling that that would be really altering the uh, bone marrow in a sense that there would be prevention of the progression or that there would be decrease or elimination of the malignant clone. It is really focused on the immediate need of what we aim for in TV patients to decrease that risk of thrombosis, which is the main reason for dying in polycythemia vera. Okay. Um, so, looking forward, uh, what are the entry requirements for patients who may be interested in participating in the clinical trial? So, this is a multi-center study. It's being done uh, around the United States, and uh, the information on the actual particular centers that participate can be found on the clinicaltrials.gov. Uh, if you look at the Policytemia Vera studies or PTG 300, or at the, uh, the site for uh, the maker of the drug protagonist. 
uh, the study would require patients either on or off the chemo chemotherapy, so patients on hydria or off hydroxyurea. As long as they're on a stable dose of hydroxyurea, they can participate. But basically, the information on the need for phlebotomy is the paramount because the goal is to eliminate the need for phlebotomy. So patients who are not controlled well, have uncontrolled hematopoiesis and require multiple phlebotomies are welcome to participate. Okay. And just uh, curious, is this something that might be offered to uh, a patient in the early course of the disease, or do they have to go through the initial bout of multiple phlebotomies, or, or tell me how a, an early stage patient might fit in? At the moment, the study is focused on patients who are not newly diagnosed. The patients may be early in the disease state, but not newly diagnosed. So uh, the requirement would be for patients with established diagnosis who are being treated conventional way, and yet the achievement of the elimination of the phlebotomy need and control of hematocrit cannot be, or is it not, as uh, achieved yet. And in that setting, we introduce medications with the goal to eliminate uh, phlebotomy need. So we don't really include the patients that are newly diagnosed and where we are only at the beginning and the patients have not yet received any therapy at all. Maybe that's the future, but not at the moment. Okay. Um, I can see that angle. Uh, you know, it sounds like a, a good strategy. Um, so this is a trial that we'll definitely be keeping an eye on. Is there anything that you'd like to add? I'm very happy that we have a, a new views on the uh, efforts uh, how to achieve uh, what the goals of the therapies in polycythemia vera are. This particular biological approach, understanding the metabolism of iron, as you see, lead us to identify medications that are not killing cells. We are altering the metabolism in the body of the patients in a way that helps control the disease, diminish the symptoms, and potentially therefore helpful in the clinical scenarios that I described. So, we are moving on from the chemotherapy or uh, JAK inhibitors to other types of therapies. And I encourage my colleagues and my patients to explore participation and enrollment in clinical studies like this one. Okay. And um, I actually did take a uh, look at the list. Is it possible that the uh, list of uh, participating clinics uh, could expand or? Uh... I think that the, these early signs of activity certainly will uh, make uh, many of my colleagues in the field interested in looking at that and possibly joining the effort because that's a very good sign. Safe and effective, but in small number of patients. Let's see how does this fare in multi-center large studies with many more patients to refine exactly how to give it, who to give it, and how to develop it further. Okay, all right, very well. Well, I appreciate uh, you giving us the overview today, Dr. Vrstovsic, and uh, I'll look forward to following uh, the results closely in the upcoming uh, months and time ahead. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your interest, and let's follow it together. Okay. Thank you again.